Enter Laura Jones, the German traveller who's been exploring Australia for the last three and a half years. What would you do if you broke down on a 200 kilometre desert road and your oil cap had disappeared? After buying an SUV and kitting it out into a home on wheels, Laura was just about to find out. We also talk about how Aussie families were taking in stranded backpackers during the pandemic and how to avoid life going past a little bit too quickly. And as always, we'd like to thank the sponsor of today's podcast, Dry Flush Toilets. If you haven't seen these amazing off-grid toilets, you really need to check them out. They're the cleanest, easiest, smell-free toilet that you've ever seen. And they recently won the best new camping technology in Australia. No more dumping chemicals or maintaining a composting toilet. Go to www.dryflush.com.au to see how they work. Let's get traveling. Welcome to the Off-Grid Traveler podcast where we meet the people who go off-grid and into a life of adventure, challenge and grand new horizons. Whether on land or on sea, you'll meet some fascinating characters who've chosen the road less travelled and discover their best tips, worst moments, favourite destinations and a whole lot more. (laughs) Uh, so, um, yeah. Uh, hey, guys. So welcome to the Off-Grid Traveller. Today, I'm uh, talking to Laura, who is from Germany, who has been living in Australia for, uh, is it about three years now or, or longer now? Three and, a, three and a half, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's been, three and a half. It's been a, been a minute. <laughs> Yeah, the really cool thing is I was going through your your Instagram and everything like that. And one of the cool things I saw is that you've actually built out your own work and travel guides. And um, you've gone probably further than most people that have ever lived here just because you want, well, how do I go the furthest I can and see the most in this country, right? So I really just wanted to get an understanding of why did you decide to go to Australia? And then what has been the adventure that you've been on? Yeah. So honestly, before I was studying, I was like an au pair in the US. So I feel like I've ticked that. So in Germany, like the non plus ultra cliche thing to do is either do an au pair year in the US or right. do work and holiday in Australia. That's like the two most common things that people do. And I've already done the au pair thing. And while I was studying, I was just like so unhappy in Germany again. And I really wanted to leave. So literally the minute I was done studying I took a plane and I was like bye I'm out of here (laughs) and I was thinking like because it is obviously so cliche I was like oh maybe I'm not even gonna like it and I knew I definitely want to have a different experience than most 19 year old backpacker would have in Australia because a lot Mm. of people they live from paycheck to paycheck um, work any job that gives them like this smallest amount of income and I knew I wanted more out of it um so I was like really happy how things work out I was really lucky in a few regards as uh, well in the beginning um and then I just ended up staying because obviously COVID happened and it was just the smarter thing for me to stay here so when, when you say that you were lucky um what what do you mean what what happened that got were, were things just lined up at the right time for you Yeah. So back when I was in the US, I was living with an American host family and I had no idea that my host dad, he worked for a company back then, but I don't think he was such a high fish in that company at that time. Um, He was just another employee, but he had, he must have gotten a lot of promotions um, after I have left the US. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. And then when I arrived in Melbourne, like three weeks after I arrived, my host mom had sent me an email and she's like, hey, what's new? Um, And I was like, oh, I've just like moved to Melbourne. And he's, and she was like, oh, no kidding. Like John, my host dad, he's in Melbourne on a business trip right now. You guys should definitely like link, link up and meet up for a drink. And I was like, oh, no way. Like, what are the chances that a, his company had expanded into Australia and has like an office in the city in where I just moved to. <laughs> exactly. And also that he's on that business trip like three weeks after I arrived. And I, I met up with him and he's like, oh, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, you know, like I've got a job in hospitality, but I like really want to like do something more given that I do have a bachelor's degree and everything. 
Um, and he's like, well, do you want me to get you an interview? And I didn't even, until then, I didn't even understand that that's like an option, you know, that like with connections, you can just get in somewhere without fulfilling the requirements, really. Yeah. And then I was like, well, if that's possible, like, absolutely. Went to the interview. They didn't want to hire me. Like, they did <laughs> not want to hire me. They were so unimpressed by me. <laughs> they, I, I remember my boss asked me in the interview, he's like, have you ever done a job like that? And I was like, no. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even I didn't even try to sell myself like they obviously kind of had to hire me just because my host said he was the CEO at that time of that company so they kind of had to hire me and I was really really lucky because under any other circumstance like I wouldn't have gotten that job at all but then like a week in like they saw that I was a really competitive character which is actually the key to that role that I was in so it yeah. kind of worked out really well and then my boss was like such a fan of me like I did fulfill all the requirements then like he just didn't see it in the interview because I did nothing to sell myself <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah that's like why I was so lucky that I got the job in the first place like, I got the interview and then got the job and ended up being really good like really good pay like really good for saving that's really because okay so there's two two literal lessons that i've got from there first of all uh don't judge a book by its cover because obviously you ended up being one of the most competitive uh people within that company for them and uh the second thing is um it's all about who you know and that it's would not have happened for you, you know. unless you went traveling and and built those relationships initially, which is because we we had a brief conversation yesterday where it went on a bit of a tangent about just when you meet people and building those relationships, how, you know, even five, 10 years down the line, they could end up, something could potentially happen, which is a, a massive benefit, which could change your life in the future. A hundred percent. And I see that so often, like it's, just about who you know not really what you know obviously certain skills help you out a lot yeah. but a lot of times it's just about who you know and then you get in you learn the skills on the go and then you're just as successful yeah no I love that and so th then it comes down to you started working there um but when I was going through your 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 profile, you are the solo traveler. You have been going all mm -hmm. around Australia. You've gone to so many other countries as well, but I know that you spent a lot of time in Australia. So it's really just understanding what got you thinking, okay, I want to start sharing these adventures of other people. And and what, what's been the kind of, uh, yeah, where, where's been the craziest places you've been so far? Yeah, okay. So mainly why I want to share all my tips and like travel things is because so many people ask me yeah. for like advice. And honestly, at a point, I was just like getting a little bit tired of like telling everybody individually. I was same like, well, thing, right? I may as well. <laughs> exact same thing, same conversation over and over. I just felt a little bit like in an interview, like everybody was just like, oh, what's your favorite color? Oh, it's yellow. <laughs> um, so it's just like, kind of trying to create a space where I can like put all those tips on and then just tell someone oh just like have a look like when people ask me oh like what's your best recommendations for like Bali and I was like oh like I've actually got an Instagram highlight on that like just go through and you can like it's linked to like Google Maps and then you can just save it instantly yeah. you know rather than me telling someone a list and then they won't remember it anyway so it's like a little bit of waste of time almost um, so I was like, I really want to like have a place where I can like just share all of that. And then I don't have to repeat myself over and over again. And I find it's like a lot more accessible and easy for somebody to also save those tips and yeah. not hear it once and then forget it again. Yeah. So I just find that makes it a little bit easier. And in terms of favorite place, like honestly, so many people ask that. I never ask that question because I find it so difficult to answer. It is. Like every country is so different from the next. And I find it so difficult to say, oh, this is like, obviously there's people that say, oh, this is my favorite country in the world. Um, it's mostly people that go to the same country over and over mm. again and don't try out that many new things, I find. Um so I have honestly so many favorite countries. Like I loved Iceland. Wow. Loved it. Like 
just because it's so different. Like I find it's really easy to say, oh, I love this country because the beaches are so beautiful. The beaches are so beautiful in many countries. Um, but for me, Iceland and those colder countries, like I also loved Alaska. I was in Alaska in the US um, once. And it's just like those colder countries, what they have, like the glaciers, the northern lights, it's just for me so special to see those things because I yeah. find it's not that often that people get to see those things. So it's just like more of a wow factor for me because I've seen so many pretty beaches that sometimes after a while i can't appreciate that anymore because i've just seen so many similar beaches yeah you know i seen i was like oh yeah good beach like uh but it's get it's so difficult because like you don't want to put yourself in a position where you don't appreciate the things anymore so i find if i switch it up more often it's easier for me to keep that appreciation for something new that's a that's a really amazing tip there in regards to try and do different things once in a while just so that you don't get used to the same uh process because mm. look you you could go to the most beautiful place as you said every single day but what's going to happen is your brain is not going to appreciate it after a certain period of time it just happens that's that's, that's how we are um but if you then go to the arid desert of of uh of australia or you go to the beautiful hills in new zealand or like you said you go to iceland and go see the uh oh what's it called the the borealis um it, it's yeah. like your brain is going to continuously be uh, basically creating new memories, which then actually will give you the 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 sensation that you've lived a longer life. Because one thing that I've learned is that when you're doing the monotonous thing every single day, you end up feeling like time's moving faster. But it's just because your brain's cutting out all of the small, boring things. And so you just wake up, you eat dinner and you go to bed, which is terrifying. Exactly. Exactly. That's kind of the life where I'm like running away from a little bit or not running away. Like it's obviously <laughs> very intentional. Yeah. Um, intentional I'm just trying jog. to avoid that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm just trying to avoid that um, at all costs to do the same thing all the time because I find a lot of the people I know from Germany, they work a nine to five. They have the same routine day in, day out, and they work for that six week of paid holidays we're really lucky in germany it gets six that's really weeks good of paid holidays. <laughs> um, but they work just for that for like their one or two holidays that they have booked a year and that's it mm. like the year is so long why would you only work for those say you go on a two-week holiday there and a one-week holiday there why would you invest so much time like valuable time to just enjoy those three weeks and the other days of the year is just like wasted then like um, I just find it's so life is so much more than those few holidays. Um, yeah, that's probably why I do it. <laughs> well, they, it, and it's 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 interesting because you know, as as I'm sure you've seen, so many people are now doing uh, road trips, but long road trips, and they're doing like uh, they're living on boats now, and all, all kinds of things to kind of well, digital nomads in general. They they're going from hostel to hostel or hotel to hotel, and this whole different lifestyle is that you you can still work. Uh, and a nine to five, but you can do it while exactly. you're sitting watching uh, a beautiful wave go by, or you're in the middle of the mountains and stuff like that. And, you know, look, there's there's some jobs where you can't do that when it comes down to being a yeah. doctor, when it becomes to be an engineer. And for, for those people, you know, thank you very much for doing what you do. And, and we understand that you can't move all the time. But again, at the same time, if, if you're in a position where you may not be able to move, potentially after a year or two of doing that, you can move to another location and 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 check exactly. out exactly a new place. Iceland, if your feet get cold, maybe don't go to Iceland or, or Greenland, but you know, the, the opportunities there. Yeah, maybe not for a long time, but yeah, I can highly recommend Iceland. Expensive, so expensive, <laughs> but worth it, worth every penny. Yeah, yeah, no, that's amazing. So, and and the couple couple more things which uh, jumped into my mind from that is first of all, you you mentioned before that you're actually going to be going to Canada next, which is really cool. Yes. And um, so the big thing is, and you said it yesterday, is um, you're missing the snow. Is that the main thing? Honestly, it's a very con controversial and weird thing to say about Australia and I get a lot of hate for saying it but I'm gonna do it anyways um, it really bothers me that the seasons aren't really as extreme here and also that the seasons are in my mind in the at the wrong time so 
when it's summer in my European mind, mm. it's actually raining here. Yeah. Like it's it's not even winter, you know, they don't really have a winter. It's just cold and like a little bit uncomfortable, probably like it is in England. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then when it's winter in my European mind, it's hot here. Yeah. So for me, this entire like seasonal seasonal mislocation basically is really bothering me. And then also that Christmas is in the hot season. Like I hate it. Everybody loves it. Everybody's like, oh, it's so warm. Let's go to the beach. And I was like, yeah, but like it's Christmas. Like, <laughs> or, like it's it needs to be snowy. It needs to be cold. You need to go to Christmas markets. You need to bake cookies and listen to Christmas music. And drink mold wine. And it just feels exactly and it just feels so weird doing those things when it's like 30 degrees outside and then there's not really a pre-christmas like build up which i really right. enjoy like there's one day of christmas in australia which is the 25th but everybody still goes to the beach to have a barbecue it's just like <laughs> it's christmas you know and then the I next day is boxing day i love yeah, the next so day much. is boxing day so it's all all gone again it's just like doesn't really align with what i want so much i love australia like it's such a great country and it's such a good country to stay here for a longer time to yeah. work and save and travel around the country like you just can't see everything in just one trip no so in my opinion it makes sense to definitely come for a bit longer right and and, and so because i saw that you were driving around in a was it a converted uh like a car or a truck yes and no, it's not a truck. It's it was just an SUV, so it was very it's very cool. small. Uh, honestly, again, I was so lucky. Like that was my probably my biggest goal and dream when I came to Australia to like right. travel around the country in a converted car or van. Van was my first idea, That's so and cool. I had a look at the van. I had a look at the van, and I was like, "Well, Laura, great. You don't know the first thing about buying a car. You don't know the first thing about." looking at a car seeing if something's wrong you don't know how to buy a car in australia you don't know how to build out a car so there was like a few little problems that i was facing um and then i kind of put it aside for a little bit then covid happened and i was like well i really want to have a car like i really want to like deck out my own car like build it from scratch however i want it and I was like, okay, what can you do? And when COVID happened, a really great thing happened in Australia. Um, there was this whole movement. It's called Adopt a Backpacker, where Australian families took in stranded backpackers that no like, basically couldn't afford to fly home um, just so they could get back up on their feet and um, afford a ticket home. That was the original idea because through COVID, everybody that worked in hospitality, or such industry they lost their jobs so they couldn't really afford life anymore and then all these australian families came forward and just taking in people and it's like facebook groups for every individual state and i was like well i don't really have any money problems because i could actually keep my job um during covid but i really wanted this car like i just had it stuck in my head that i wanted to have that and i went on there and put up a little post and I said, um, like, I'm Laura from Germany. I really would love to, like, buy a car and deck it out. Um, this project my dad would absolutely love helping me with. Mm. But obviously that's not possible because he's in Germany. I'm stuck here. Nice comment. Um, but basically, basically looking for somebody that could help me a little bit, give me guidance, whatever is possible, like, not asking for, like, a miracle and then I got a few hate comments on that post. Like somebody wrote, oh, if you find that person, like free accommodation, free mechanic, let me know and I'll move in too. <laughs> and actually it was that comment that triggered the person who messaged me to message me in the first place. And he said, Laura, we're down in Brisbane, would be happy to help you out. Wow. Um, and I went on a call with that guy and it was like, his name's David. He's going to love hearing this because like I tell the story so often, like such a godsend. Um, he said, hey, Laura, like I'm living in Brisbane with my wife. We're developers. Um, we have three kids, but they're out of the house. I would actually love to help you with that project. And I was like, 
so thankful I was like and I'm happy to like pay rent or whatever like I'm not that stuck on money like I just need help I don't know yeah, how these yeah. things work I just like don't think I can take on that project without any guidance and he's like no don't worry about it wow. and I stayed with that family for three weeks didn't pay any money on accommodation didn't pay any money for food um we bought a car together on my day one like he went look looking at cars with me had a look at them he knows a lot about cars um i think he like called his son to run it against like this board where you can see if there's any unpaid tickets on it yeah. like that all happened like i didn't even ask for it he just knew exactly what he was doing he just like um do that like we just want to make sure that girl doesn't buy a car that has like a lot of unpaid tickets on it and then he took the next two and a half weeks out of his time he didn't work or anything for himself and he was in the garage with me every single day from sunrise to sunset decking out this car wow it was so crazy to me like whenever i tell someone that that happened in germany they cannot believe it like nobody would ever do that to you for you you know like it's crazy and we were just like building out the car i didn't know what i was doing but he let me try right. every machine every tool just so i could learn like i wasn't helpful at all i don't think <laughs> but he just he just like had me help him and whatever and they actually gave me so much camping equipment because they had spare like he did a service on my car and paid for the oil and everything. It was insane. The level of kindness and generosity that family gave me. It was absolutely crazy. David, good on you. Like, wow. Yeah. Um, th- so when, we, th- when we finished the build, I cried. <laughs> well, it's, like, it's, it's one of those things if you, you, if you don't ask, uh, you don't get, right? And you put exactly. out the vibes into the world and you said, hey... Um, this is what I want and hopefully someone can help me and fingers crossed something happens and you you didn't just get a uh, you know a, a good experience you got one of the most amazing experiences probably anyone's ever had and you know to, to say that you stayed with them for three weeks you learn everything about how to then look after your uh your your SUV. exactly and yeah on on that note when when you started traveling did you ever have any problems when you were on the road that you were able to sort out yes <laughs> Many and um, <laughs> David became <laughs> David became my FaceTime um, mechanic. Love that. So every time I had an issue, I would call him, hold up the phone um, under the bonnet of the car, and he would say, "Put your finger here, move it up there," and then he would explain to me what's wrong. Like he could see that on that screen, and I was like, "I don't understand how this is possible." Like <laughs> I don't. <laughs> it was a miracle to me. Like I lost my oil cap on a corrugated road right a 200 kilometer corrugated road and my oil cap came loose it was actually a little bit faulty like you could you would twist it shut and then if you twist it a little bit more it would open again um so it was a little bit faulty and i was aware of that but it it didn't occur to me that it could come totally off yeah yes exactly but this 200 kilometer corrugated road which happens in australia did the trick and i arrived at my free camp for the night no reception like no internet reception so super far away from any big city or any shop and i looked at my car and i was like oh that's so weird like it looks a little like there's just like stuff coming out of it popped up the bonnet and i was like fuck the entire everything under the car was full of engine oil everything and I put in my, um, what's it called, uh, um, the stick, put it in. And I was like, there's almost nothing left. And um, luckily, I did have spare oil. But I was like, how do I get, if I fill it up, I don't have a cap because the cap was gone. It just yeah. was somewhere on a corrugated road, probably. Um, I was like, how do I get to the next city that's still like 120K away? Mm. And then... I went around a free camp asking everybody for help. And like everybody was looking at my car. This is so normal in Australia. Everybody just helps you when yeah. you're in trouble. Um, and we like sorted out. Um, somebody had an old bike tire and he cut it up. It he was like, oh, I was a... going to throw it, throw it away anyways. He cut it up, put it over that hole, um, put like some other holdings or whatever on top of it i had no idea how that happened but it got me to the next point 
And then I was like, David, we need to have a call. <laughs> and I called him and I was like, David, like, how do I clean up this mess? This is what happened. <laughs> and he's like, Laura, don't worry. Like, he pointed out, like, this is a little bit tricky. Like, don't pour water or like, dif- like a diffuser on it everywhere like this is the part you need to be really careful Mm. this is the part you also should switch out now because they probably have too much oil Mm. um on them and he just helped me out with that as well you know like um yeah that was probably the craziest car thing that happened to me one time like my tires were completely worn off and i didn't realize oh my Um, gosh (laughs) yeah it's just because like there's so much weight in the back So you actually need to rotate the tires so they Mm. wear out evenly. I think that I didn't know. Um, Found out the hard way and had to pay like for four brand new tires in an instant. But this is crazy. Yeah, well, this this is the thing is that you you went the kind of route you you had uh, your your angel investor David who has basically mm-hmm. given you the full Absolutely. breakdown. But then at the same time, you still haven't done this before, so you're getting you're getting the learnings as you're going, and everything that can go wrong has gone wrong. And um, but th- this is the question with it: even though all those things went wrong, would you do it again? Hundred percent. Like tomorrow. Like. I've learned so much. Like I can look at the car now and like, I know how things work, you know, a little bit. Like I'm obviously no expert, but like I've learned now that I can do things that I don't know and don't feel comfortable with because it will work out. Like I might need to ask a lot of people for help, but people are actually really happy to help you if you ask them uh, in a genuine way, you know, like, um, I was obviously really lucky and fortunate, like how everything played out for me there. But um, it's just a good reminder that you can do things that you don't know nothing about just with the help of someone genuine or just like by asking other people to help you. People are always willing to help out and people are always willing mm. to, 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 well, impart their knowledge, um, especially when you are in the middle of nowhere and you aren't going to get anywhere else uh, for a while, which is, exactly. which is really cool. <laughs> and one thing I want to uh, go, go back to is that you mentioned about um, the free camping place. Now, I saw as well mm. that you made a full uh, a list of camping places before that you would recommend to people, right? Yeah, so that's all free camps. Like in Australia, you can actually free camp in a lot of spots right? Um, rather than staying uh, at like a caravan park. Because for me, it's like I have everything I need in my little car. This episode of Off Grid Traveller is proudly sponsored by Dry Flush Toilets Australia, home of the world famous Lavio Dry Flush Toilet. This patented electric toilet has no chemicals, is not a composting system, and can be set up literally anywhere in under 60 seconds. It looks and feels like an at-home toilet to use, but it can be used anywhere with no external power or water, and it still flushes. There's also no cartridge to clean or empty, and it's perfect for camping, caravans, converted vans, boats, tiny homes, or anything off-grid. Go to www.dryflush.com.au and use coupon code off grid to get a 10% discount on your toilet order today. Like crammed in with other campers. I'm still sleeping in the same bed, you know, like I'm still mm. sleeping in the back of my car. I'm still like using all my cooking utensils because I'm not going to bring everything I own to their camp kitchen if I have everything right there. Yeah. You know, so it wasn't really any advantage. So I was like, right like I'd rather save that money and free camp wherever I can Mm. and I think I only paid for camping maybe make it five nights in the whole one and a half years I was living in the car Um, but other than that I free camped everywhere and there's this app it's called um, Vicky Camps Vicky Camps you pay like a Vicky Camps exactly I think it works in New Zealand as well Um, I use in Australia and you pay like a one-time fee, which is like seven or eight dollars, like nothing. And then you have mm. it forever. And then it tells you all the free camps, what facilities they have. It tells you where the phone coverage for your network is good. Um, it just gives you so much insight, like for such a little price. Um, yeah, 
definitely that's a softer work. essential then basically work. yeah okay that's yeah. cool well yeah so because um on the top of your head just what were the the best camping places that you found uh where you maybe they had the best amenities or the best people or which ones or maybe even the top one really kind of sticks out in your head yeah i really like the one where i lost the oil cap uh i can respect <laughs> well, that it's unfortunate, but <laughs> that, just like such such a pretty location it was just like in the northern territory um and it's called, it's just right by the Finke River. Okay. Um, and it's just like right at the river. You just, you park right up next to the river. There's actually no toilet or shower or anything. So you just need to like arrange yourself with that. Um, but you know, it's like in the middle of the bush. So you just like go there <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, and that's like a really, really nice one. There's honestly, there's so many beautiful ones, but that was a really nice one. I enjoyed staying there a lot. No, that's beautiful. And then when it comes down to your like essentials that you would take with you a hundred percent if you when you're traveling, because I saw with your SUV that you had that little pull-out part that had the cooking set up, mm. and it's really, really cool that you you had the ability to literally have a, a barbecue basically where, yeah. wherever you wanted. So what would you say are your top three essentials when you're on on the road as well? Ooh, in that little, that obviously varies a lot. I don't have the car anymore. I sold mm. it last year. Um, but in the car, it was definitely having a second battery in the back. So yeah. I had a second battery. David gifted me that battery and connected it to my main battery. So it would charge while I was driving. And then I could just like plug in all my electronics. Like I take lots of photos, like yeah. I've got a drone camera, everything. So it would charge all of my devices, even if I wasn't driving. That was so handy because it sucks when you're running out of battery and you're like in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Um, so that was really good. Then what I really liked as well, I had some uh, mosquito net covers for my windows because obviously in Australia it gets pretty hot. So then you can sleep with the windows down, but you don't get any insects or flies yeah. in. Um, that was really handy. And then head torch, can't do anything without a head torch. <laughs> camping, you need to like go outside in the middle of the night or look at the car, whatever. You need a head torch. It's, it's such it's, a it's, small thing, but it hel- it's so helpful. It's really funny that you said that because like I've I've done uh, quite a few uh, of, of these potties now and no one's mentioned the head torch. And yeah, <laughs> like so important. The amount of times I've been in the jungle mm-hmm. and you essential is a head torch. If you don't have a head torch, yes. you are walking blind in the, in the middle of the night when there is literally no uh, light pollution. You've got the most beautiful like uh, stars above, but sometimes there's clouds above. And what does that mean? You yeah. can't see anything. It's it's terrifyingly dark, you know. Yeah. And all you can hear is the yeah. sounds of everything around you, which I love. But I do like to be able to see things. So. Yeah, I was see where you're going. Absolutely. I think so many people forget about it because obviously every cell phone has a torch as well. That's right. But you need to hold that the entire time. You need to have battery for it. And obviously for a head torch, I bought mine four years ago and I haven't changed the battery once. No way. And I've used it. I've used it so much. You know, you just like you strap it on, your hands are free. Like I use it for when I was cooking at night uh, mm. at the car or when I was going to the bathroom in the middle of the night or like mm. for a sunrise hike. It's just so easy that your hands are free and it's it doesn't cost anything. You know, it's like such an easy game changer. I love so that. Definitely would recommend. Oh, no, that's really cool. Well, there you go. Um, and so obviously as you're going to Canada, are you thinking of planning on doing a road trip there as well? Or are you thinking of staying in one location for a bit? It's a little bit tricky because as I get older, like I kind of want to have a base somewhere a little bit more and not constantly be moving all the time Mm. because it's really difficult to like build up something more stable. Um, So I'm still going to travel a little bit because there's different places I want to see in Canada um and i think i'll probably get a car as well because just like i'll i want to arrive in vancouver be there for the summer and then basically move to bend for the winter season yeah um and learn how to ski or snowboard beautiful um and i think in that location it will be really handy to have a car because then you can actually do day trips and stuff 
Yeah. Um, I think in a city, you definitely don't need a car, but as soon as you're a little bit more remote, you kind of want to have a car and be independent yeah. and see all the surroundings, especially in a location like Canada. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. Just, just a given for me. So I'll probably buy a car. I'm not 100% sure if I'll move completely back in the car, especially because it will be cold in Canada. <laughs> it's a bit <laughs> so I'm different. Not sure. <laughs> exactly. Like um 20 degrees at night is different from minus 10 degrees yes. at night. So yeah. um definitely need to consider that as well. I could however totally see myself in the future in Europe building out a bus. Yeah, yeah, like going ca- camper camper van uh, process. Exactly. To be honest, it, it's like know, go big up. <laughs> Yeah, well, the the thing is as well is that um, as as we get older as well, we find that we do enjoy the luxuries uh, a little bit, you know, and and uh, like I used to be able to stay in hostels and stuff, as we said before, where you wake up and it still smells like vodka from the night before, whereas now yeah. I would not be seen dead in a place like that because I like yeah. waking up feeling fresh and I like I like the luxuries of of those sort of things, so you know. Um, are, are you going to be living in a car in 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 a couple of years? Probably not. You're going to be living in a in in your van, and you're going to have your your bed, and you're going to have your toilet, and you're going to have all the amenities because you can, right? Like it's, it's good mattress, a good mattress. Yeah, exactly. Good mattress, <laughs> definitely. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, well, look, Laura, it's been amazing having you on today. Um, you know, anyone who wants to follow Laura, I highly recommend you check out her Instagram, which is uh, Laura Maria Jones. Um, she is the solo traveler. She's been in Australia, moving to Canada. And uh, honestly, if you go look at her profile, it's just a multicolored, wonderful uh, uh, photography mindset individual. So thank you so much for being on today. If you or someone you know would be an interesting guest on the show, we'd love to hear from you. We love speaking to everyday people who've taken to the open road or open seas for an extended period of time or anyone that's set up their life in an off-grid location. Please email guest at offgridtraveller.com.au to get in touch. That's two L's in Traveller. If you like that video, you'll probably like this one and you'll really love this one. And as always, we want to thank you for joining us. And if you want to like and subscribe, it really helps the channel grow. And it means that we can talk about more travel, get more tips and everything off grid. Cheers.